Hey guys, what's up? It's Butterfinger5678 and today I'm going to give you a tutorial on advanced muzzle flares. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. For a lot of people, you know, is they make, you know, you can tell when a muzzle flash is really fake. You know, there's not really much to tell about it. So here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be kind of making something that looks like this. Now if you can see, you got your muzzle flare, you've got some lights and all whatnot, and that's what I'm going to teach you about today. So what you need to do is you need to get um, your video file and bring it in and make a new comp. Okay. So of course this is unedited. This isn't even. It's the same sequence, but this is before everything's happening. So probably. Yeah, probably start about right here. Hit the letter B, and that'll be your beginning marker for your RAM preview. And then we'll probably go, probably end it. Oh, about right here. You can hit the letter N. Now I'll just do because there's multiple muzzle flares in this. Oh, Control Z. Love Control Z. We'll begin it right there maybe a few frames before okay so here's what we're gonna do you want to get a muzzle flare and you want to bring it into your comp so let's just make sure yeah he can start about uh, about right there so let's bring it in maybe zoom in okay so there's many different places you can get your muzzle flares you can go to google images and just search muzzle flares you gotta make sure it's on a ba black background so you can uh mask out and key out the the black in it so then all you see is your muzzle flare and the ones that i'm using i've got them from the action essentials package from videocopilot.net so pretty nifty they're already pre keyed and everything but still even not it's just a few extra little things that you can do and it's gonna look basically the same. Okay, so first I want to 3D this layer because if you notice the sh the direction that the weapon is being pointed. So I'm gonna zoom out and push this back into 3D space. Probably go up to 100%. Move around and hit the letter R, and you can mess with the rotation. So that looks pretty good. Now we probably want to uh, give it a bit of rotation, maybe mess with the scaling, because I mean you want your muzzle flash to be pretty big, but you don't want it to be like insanely big, because then people will just kind of hey dude, what, what's up with that muzzle flash, it's freaking huge, and you do want to watch your recoil with your weapon, now of course, speaking of weapons, don't be an idiot, just you can use little plastic guns, I mean lot, even some of the airsoft pistols, they're plastic, look completely real. Uh, this is just a broken little BB pistol they were using, but nonetheless, don't use any real firearms because that's you can easily get yourself shot at, and then you can get the cops called on. Eh, yeah, mm -hmm. we have gotten uh, caught once before. Of course, nothing really happened. They were just wondering what we're doing. So you always want to be really careful. Man, it's really storming out there. If you guys can't hear that thunder, okay. So this is looking pretty good. Go ahead. Maybe shorten one frame of that, so it's occurring right there. And you got the du the the gunpowder dust coming out. Now a lot of people don't really modify any of their effects. What we're I'm going to teach you how to do is how to make it look more soft because lots of muzzle flares are really hard looking. I mean this is pretty soft looking, but kind of want it to be a bit softer and easy fix. Just get like a box blur. Let's turn it to maybe five. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, and, I mean, you can also do some color corrections, maybe add some glow in there. It just depends. After Effects has lots of different presets for glow. If you don't use the right one, it's, it, it kind of just is kind of mind-stressing. Okay, so we've got our muzzle flare right here, but we also want to have just some smoke, because if anyone, if you've seen a real firearm being shot there's always a lot of smoke that comes out of the barrel 
Okay, so we've got our little powder effect right here. Uh, we'll go ahead and 3D that. Now if you notice, and this is also from the Action Essentials Pack, it's a couple frames before it even goes. So, holy crap. Uh, just go ahead and take that back. And what we need to do is push it back in Z space because you don't want it on top of it. You want these to be blended together. So this still is not far back enough. You'll realize it because it's, you can see like this, it's kind of going through it. So that needs to be pushed back a bit further like that. So that's looking pretty good, but of course it's still facing us. So we want to mess with the Y rotations. Torque that a little bit. Maybe just kind of offset it, maybe rotate it a little bit. So that's overall, oh, maybe uh, go to the position, maybe push this back a bit more in Z space so we can see the tip of our muzzle flare. Okay, um, let's push that back a bit more. And that's looking better. Maybe, uh, oh, never mind. You can't actually see it, it's just because it, see, that's what you want. You want it to be blended. Okay, so let's zoom out to 50%. Just give a RAM preview. Okay, that's still obviously way too big. So we want to scale it down, scale it down, scale it down. Now, of course, you want to zoom back in. If you don't have an eye for detail, you're not going to be able to be super successful with effects. I mean, I'm not saying there's some things that you can't, that you won't be able to do, and saying that you're going to suck at it for life. No, it's just that. The more detail you have what, that you look for, um, yes, it will be means longer with um, making these effects, but they will in turn look much better. Okay, so yeah, it's already it's, it's kind of choppy right there still. So I'll go ahead, and bring in a sound effect. This is uh, just a little UMP sound. And there's many different places, really good places you can find sound effects for weapons, all sorts of stuff. Like you can go to soundbible.com or you can go to um, this website called soundfxnow.com and they have some really good ones. So this will just help with selling it a bit more. Of course, I mean you have to have it, but also when you're just rendering it because a lot of times I'll composite all the sounds and everything in Premiere Pro and just bring it in and I'll just add the effects but of course I'm just doing this little segment so I go ahead and add the sound anyway okay so it's looking pretty good but there's no environmental interaction we want that so if you want to really stylize and also make this look extremely realistic hit control D on your video feed and hit control shift D and cut it at the beginning of when your muzzle flash occurs count over three or four frames one two three four and then hit control shift D control X and then set your blending mode to add and I see you got all the stuff going on see it's in it's lighting up the entire picture now of course that on itself I mean you know it's kind of woohoo yeah so let's zoom back into a hundred percent and what we're going to do is we're going to mask out this light. So you probably want to choose areas that the light would affect the environment from the firearm. So for instance, this my friend's face, uh, do his torso. Now you do want to be particular with these because when you feather this out, it will look, it will be taking this background. So if I were to get just like say this little section right here and I have some of that brick. Some of that brick's gonna be lightened up and we know that the light's not actually all the way back there. So yeah, you wanna be really particular with this. So maybe again some of uh, his leg, his pants, um, maybe the other side too. And that's probably pretty good for his body. Maybe some of his shoe. Oh, let's see. I mean, it really just depends on how particular you want to be with this. And then, if you click this button, your mask go away. If you click on the second video feed, hit F, select all your masks, and feather them out. And you just want to make it accordingly. So, probably about 
right there. Now, of course, this is daytime, so you don't want to be as much. So we'll probably turn the opacity down on those just a little bit, just enough so it's lighting up, but at the same time, it's not, you know, just kind of crazy. Now, if I'll go back out to 50%, we'll preview this. Oh. And that's one thing you want. You want your T opacity. Um, you want to disappear whenever you're making this. So, yeah, you can kind of see it's moving a bit. So what we can do, because you overall want these masks to disappear after a few frames. If we go to the masks, we select them all again. Let's go ahead and customize their opacity. We'll zoom this in a bit more. So we probably want them to be these ones. Uh, you can, you could pretty much just end them about right here. But actually, what you could do instead is just um, click the clock for your shape. Oh, bring the masks back on. Zoom up to 100%. And you could just move these over, so we'll, we can see what that'll look like. But then you also see... It just sort of moves. Okay. So what we could do is, like, see right here this mask 5 is not even touching him. So probably just not even move that. We'll just have that mask just probably just disappear on the spot after frame so we'll go back now you can see there's some light still right here so that would be mask 4 uh, you can mess with the opacity on that maybe by here make that 0 so we can see how this might look because there's many different situations that you will have to move these masks because I mean a lot of people will just watch tutorial and do the exact same thing I don't really believe in that I think that you should take the effects and the knowledge and use it in your own way because there have been scenes that I haven't even had to touch or move these masks at all see here we actually do need to move them And see that's looking pretty good right there I mean you can tell that it's a bit outside but I mean this is all happening really fast just two frames and I mean the only people that are really gonna catch this is probably someone like you or me just movie makers in general that have a really an eye for detail like me I would probably go a bit more and move this out actually I could probably move those masks more anyway, because I don't think they're even spot on. Uh, that's a bit off. Uh, position, I'm going to go back up to 100%, turn those off. Actually, I need them on. Move them over. And you want to make sure his face is looking pretty good. Okay, so we got that moving right there, and then it's just gone. That's much better in my, I, I think. Okay, so we can minimize all of these five masks. But we're not done, because remember, light travels in a full 360 view. It goes everywhere. So, see, that's looking good. Now, when we start this mask, there's also more stuff we have to mask out. Say, this car, this side of the car, is a perfect choice. So, I'll zoom in to 100%. You know, we probably want... Oh. You probably most likely want uh, just not all the roof, some just some of the roof, because it is sort of circular. And then there's that. Um, you also could get the door, the side doors. And remember, just be fairly particular. And you do also want to watch like things like uh, ridges, those sorts of things. Because you have to imagine where light is coming, it would also cast a shadow. And you can get even more technical than I am, and there's a way you can make a shadow. Like, if, say, light is going 
this same direction this would probably have a bit of a shadow but of course this is all happening really fast and the only people who really do those things along with the lighting effects are the people in Hollywood so yeah we don't have to be too particular I mean I know a guy that he does these um, sorts of effects and I mean he's just he's really good and he doesn't do any of the shadow casting okay so still there's still more we need to do such as these windows now remember how light travels through glass so once we get this done right here uh, you'd want to go down to these last two masks so in this case for me it'd be eight and nine um, not feather I don't want a feather I would want to turn the opacity down even more but what we probably should do is just go ahead and feather these so you go to F feather start mask six and go to nine and just bring it out and with these because the feathering does bring it out so the lights kind of expand a bit more than I'm wanting to so maybe this mask down here if I'm correct that's mask seven so I probably want the expansion to be a bit less so see that's looking much better and now for the glass windows you want your opacity you don't want that to be as much you want to be even less and then overall you because light has to travel it will dissipate over time so we probably do want to go ahead and go to mass six and seven and bring the opacity of those down so it just looks more subtle okay overall I'm thinking this is looking pretty good let me go ahead and minimize all those let's zoom back out and let's see what we've got now see that's looking much better that's looking quite realistic so if you noticed our camera is moving yes but it's our effect for our powder our smoke excuse me we want this to move with the camera now of course people can do track motioning those sorts of things but overall we just kinda want it to move over now of course you want to be really careful because you can keyframe a lot of this stuff frame by frame but it does get sort of annoying see like that you're seeing it move way too much so we probably want to control X that point just make it a bit less just a hair just a hair down and let's see that yes it does seem to move but what we also want is to see it move maybe a bit more and with our camera because my camera in this angle it's going up now this seems to look much better but also I want this to go away over a certain amount of time so we'll just kind of match it up with our opacity maybe turn it down to zero because they also won't last forever so now let's see what it looks like okay so yeah that's probably too much on the opacity probably change that out and make it longer because you, you want to all be subtle is really what you want see that's looking much more subtle okay now it's looking pretty good right here you know we've got our muzzle flash coming out we got our light on our guy and the lights dissipating So that's looking pretty good. Now there's a couple other things you can do to really stylize this. We've probably we've practically done most of it, but if you really want to, you can go to a new solid layer, make it your comp size for sure, and make it start 
control shift D when your muzzle flash is occurring. Count over like three frames and cut it again. Now After Effects has a bunch of presets so you can do the beam and the reason why you want this in another layer is so you can like blur it out. So it's gone but we want to see it right now. Composite on original. Okay so we have this so let's go to our little paint selector and we'll do it probably with our muzzle flash I mean what you can also do you probably want to be fairly white maybe maybe have a bit of a gray in it and then you can go to a blur give it a box blur maybe about three maybe four I mean, maybe 3.5 will let me. And of course, you do want this to be a lot smaller. And of course, you don't want it to be super small. You just don't want it to, you know, be extremely big. Because a lot of bullets actually do have, we'll go ahead and 3D this. There's, um, I don't know why I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, tracer rounds, that's it. Uh, they have a bit of a flare kind of behind them. Okay, and that's kind of what you're doing here. So in a sense, the way he's shooting, we want it to be probably about right here. Position. Uh, rotation, you can mess with that. Uh, mess up with the orientation. You know, because you want to kind of match the angle that you're shooting at. Uh, maybe rotate that down just a hair. And you're only going to see this for like one frame, so we'll lock position there. And then by here, probably want it off and pull it out. So maybe put this position more over and down. Now let's see how that looks. Now of course, yeah, that's still a bit big, so we can go with our scale. Scale it down a little bit. You know? And I mean, you can mess with this some more. And so for this, we would have to move it up, over, and you would have to recalibrate your rotation. So that's one thing you definitely want to do. But either way, it's just for one frame. So when you're kind of messing with this, you can. Okay, that's what you definitely don't want right there. Yeah. Uh, your second frame, because yes, it is being scaled. We do want this completely off the screen. That was my bad. So it's looking very good. And. If you don't want to use this because he has this beam, there's other effects you can mess around with to make it look still even more kind of soft and ghosty. You can mess with glows and all sorts of stuff. If you really want to do something with that, uh, you can go to videocopilot.net and they do have a lightsaber tutorial where you can actually get this lightsaber effect. So my black salt, I'll go ahead and control D that. We'll turn this one off. And we'll take our beam and box blur, take those away. And blending mode, screen. Okay, so we can take Lightsaber version 2 with its glow. Of course, we don't want it to be that kind of color. We want more of a whitish sort of color. Come on. Okay, so there we go. Now with this, you can just stretch it out. Of course, you don't want it to be this long. Probably just want it to be, you know, kind of small. And probably push this up a little bit. Let's maybe mess with our rotation. Okay. Now let's check this out. There you go. I mean, you you practically got it right there after that. 
So just remember your muzzle flare, you do want to mess with that, make it more soft looking. Uh, you do want a smoke effect, you want to add some light in there. You got to get to interact with the environment or else it's, you know, just not going to look that great, you know, because the more seemly, the, the more, the less noticeable your effects are is really the better. I know it's kind of hard to understand, but that's basically what it is because it's just, it looks more real. Like you can, if something's kind of edgy or looks kind of off, that kind of gives you a hint that it's not really there. And that's what I'm looking for and what everyone should be looking for. You just want it to be really seamless. So, I mean, this is my first tutorial, Butterfinger 5678. Subscribe for more tutorials and videos. I'm always uploading stuff all the time. And have a really good day.